my booktube, Lynette here and today's video is going to be the books that I plan to read in the month of March. So there are two readathons happening this month. I said at the beginning of the year I wasn't going to take part in many readathons and there's been one every, at least one every single month so far. Um, but there are two. One of them is one that I take part in regardless um, because it helps me with moving my TBR along and the other one is a month-long one that I took part in last year and had some fun with so I decided I'd have another go at it this year. The first one, the one that I always take part in, is another round of Final Book Support Group which is run by Steph over at Steph Loves and the aim of this is to continue and finish series that we've already started. I've explained this many, many times before. Uh, this is a week-long round this time and it is running from the 18th to the 24th of March. As always, I'm just going to read, try and prioritise and read books in series throughout the whole month um, because I find it far better for me for, um, to do it that way. I tend to read more in series that way than if I just try to concentrate it on when Steph is actually doing her readathon. The other readathon that's being run this month is Realmathon and that is run by Cassidy over at Covers with Cassidy. I will leave her channel link down below. It is not too late to go and sign up. You can sign up at any point um, and submit the books that you've been reading for the month. Um, it is a team-based readathon, so the aim is to try and get your team as close to the top of the tree as possible. Uh, you can do this um, you by reading books, submitting books, and you can either submit books for points to gain for your team or to take points away for one of the other teams. Go and check out uh, Cassidy's um, video um, explaining it all. She explains it in far more detail. She has links to documents that help. Um, so go and have a look and join us. For reference, I am on Team Shadows. We do have uh, individual prompts for the um, for the teams. And for Team Shadows, it is to read books that have primarily black covers. Uh, or to have a building on the cover or if possible combine it um, so that is going to be going to try and be um, a priority but I can't guarantee it um, because like I say I want to read books in series as well uh, but I have made um, a collection on my Kindle of books on there that are primarily black covers and I haven't counted all of my Kindle books because they're black and white on the Kindle. I have gone through um, my account and looked at the actual colour versions of the covers so I'm not cheating I promise. Um, Cassidy has already said no to that way of thinking uh, which was very disappointing at the time. Anyway let's talk about the books that I plan to read. Cozy Book Co book club that I am in every month. Uh, we have a book picked for March and I know absolutely nothing about it. I did read the synopsis when the poll went up, but I cannot remember what this book is about. We are going to be reading Now We Shall Be Entirely Free by Andrew Miller. I've got no idea. I'm sorry. I can't give you a synopsis. At the end of the month, check out the wrap up when I may be able to tell you a bit more about it. Uh, but for now, I haven't got a Scooby Doo. Um, I can't even remember the prompt that it was supposed to be. I know the ladies are not going to be surprised by me um, because I'm terrible at these things. Um, so, yeah, so uh, let's go on a journey and discover that book together, shall we? I have a couple of other books that are priorities for the month. They are ones that I have already started and I apologise you're going to see my cat now because she wants to come in and have a cuddle. Excuse Tabby's tail, she's come for a visit. I have a couple of books that are priorities right at the start of the month um, and they are because they are books that I have already started 
The first one is absolutely going to count um, for Realmathon and that is Origin in Death by JD Robb. Um, it's a primarily black cover as you can see so it will get the extra points for Realmathon. It also continues a series uh, so that will be um, helpful for the Final Book Support Group Readathon um, and it's due back at the library. It's overdue. I can't renew it because there are holds on it by other people so I have to get this read because at the point that you're seeing this it is Sunday the 3rd of March this should have been back on Wednesday the 28th of February um, and I need to get it back to the library this Wednesday they are going to find me again as usual for being late not returning books but yes I have started it um, sorry if the camera is rocking Tabby has now decided that the ring light is a scratching post um, but yes, this is book 21 in the In Death series. Um, in this book, we, Eve is investigating the murder of a doctor who uh, did um, facial sculpting, body sculpting, um, basically plastic surgery, um, but plastic surgery set in the 2050s, which is different from how it is and I don't think we're going to be as advanced as uh, J.D. Robb thought we were going to be by the time we get to that point um, even though we have another 30 years to go but yes this is um, one of the books where you don't know who the, you have an idea who the killer is um, but you don't know for definite you you get a little inkling in the prologue that gives you an idea of where the story may be going where the motive may be going um, but other than that, you don't really know anything much more about the killer. I really enjoy um, it, J.D. Robb's writing in these books. She does a fantastic job of keeping, the, if she doesn't want you to know the killer, um, she does a fantastic job of keeping it from you until she does want you to know. So I'm really looking forward to this. I'm about 100 pages in at the point that I'm filming this. Um, and I am enjoying it. Um, I'm just... I'm, I'm just being a bit slow about reading at the moment. Uh, I have lots of, um, I have a few things on my mind and reading just isn't flowing like it normally does. Not even the romance novels are flowing as well as they normally do. So um, we'll see how I do. But yes, my aim is to get this back to the library by Wednesday after you're seeing this. The second priority is to finish listening to... Um, one day by is it david mitchell i don't have my uh kindle with me um i can't remember i popped the cover up anyway um i can't remember if it's david mitchell or andrew mitchell or uh, something like that um this is about um a friend a friendship that uh, starts out at university in the late 80s and the story is told through seeing where they are where the two people are on this same day um for the next 20 years and i've got to a point with it where i don't want to re i'm so emotionally invested with the couple uh with emma and dex that i don't want to move forward with the end of the book i have it's, I've got about two and a half hours of the audiobook left. I'm listening to it and I refuse to listen to it on my commute. I've been listening to it on my commute to work every day um, and I, driving home. I mean, thankfully, I was only a couple of minutes away from home and an event happened towards the end of the book and my heart was in my throat. Um, I was trying not to cry and it just it, it broke me a little bit. And I think the final part of the book is going to break me but I think the final part of the book is also going to explain the significance of this one day um it it follows their day on July the 15th of every year following the year that they meet um so yeah so I just it's just gonna break me I know this uh, I've seen uh Lucy Jane Wood um who I follow I uh, on here and on instagram and she posted a picture of herself after reading it after talking about it and she was sobbing just talking about it um and she said that it just literally she just sat there in tears reading it and i like i have no hope because i get emotional at books um 
so I have no hope of coping with the end of this book. Uh, but yes, it's a priority. I need to finish it. Um, I am not going to listen to it on my commute. I think I'm probably going to settle down and listen to it. Um, maybe as I do a puzzle or some stitching or something a bit later on today or in the evenings over the coming week. Um, but yes, I don't want to finish it on my commute because I know it's going to make me cry. Um, and then my work colleagues are going to worry about me when I turn up looking as though I've been in tears the whole journey because I will have been. Um, so yes, so that's priority number two. Priority number three is Beholden by Corinne Michaels. This is book two in her Salvation series. Now, quite a lot of years ago now, I read books three and four in the Salvation series and I purchased book one to go back. It's a set of um, three duets and a standalone and um, a single um, novella um, covering a friendship group, a group of guys um, and ladies. And I read books three and four and absolutely fell in love with it. She really pulled the feelings and emotion out of me. And then um, I've gone back and I've read book one and now I'm on book two. Um, so I'm on the second part of Jackson and um, I've forgotten her, her name already. Their story. Um, it's the, the end of book one. I was just, again, heart in my mouth. Oh my God, where do we go from here? Please don't let this be the end because she has killed off characters in the book. Um, it's a romance, it's contemporary romance, it's uh, military, um, ex-military uh, romance um, and I just don't know why I've been sleeping on this author because I thoroughly enjoyed book one. I I have started book two, again I'm about 100 pages into book two, uh, into Beholden and I'm loving it. Um, so much so that in my reading journal I had, um, I set a layout out for backlist books to read by authors that I've loved and I've done one of my absolute favourite authors um, but I was going backwards and forwards on who else to include and I've added all of Corinne Michaels books in there um, so I have a feeling that I will be binging her because pretty much all but three of her books are available on Kindle Unlimited I have a Kindle Unlimited subscription uh, the best way to make use of it is to binge read an author um so yes yeah, so that is going to be a mission this year is to binge read all of her backlist that i can get my hands on um so yeah so that's that's the priorities for reading this month i have a couple of others that i absolutely do want to get to another one that i started in february but haven't finished yet is Sunbringer by Hannah Kainer. This is book two in her Fallen God series. It is following Kissen, Inara and Elogast and um, it picks up not long after the ending of the first book. Kissen is a god killer and in the first book she teams up with Inara who has been bonded to a god but we don't know how or why and they're not quite sure how to separate her and Elagast, who has been tasked with um, a job surrounding the gods by the king. Um, it, it was a story of betrayal, of um, finding your family, because there, it is a little find family in a way, um, and yeah, and about how um, obviously gods come into fashion, go out of fashion, and yeah and it's about a struggle for power um and sunbringer is following on from that from the end of that i can't give you a synopsis for sunbringer because that would give away some of what happened in book one book one was called god killer um you can't see it it's up on my shelves up there but you can't see it because it's right on the very top shelf uh, but I am absolutely so happy to have this in my hands. I managed to um, get the copy that matches the copy of God Killer. I got the Waterstones edition last year, the signed Waterstones edition. I've managed to get my hands on the signed Waterstones edition of Sunbringer so that they match on my shelves. The covers are glorious. I wasn't too sure about this cover at first, but once I had it in my hands, 
the colors are just stunning i mean look at those sprayed edges i mean mine's a little bit warped unfortunately but once it's been clamped together on the shelves it'll be fine but yes it is just absolutely um sucking me in again i think i'm about a hundred yep just over a hundred pages into this one uh so this one is another priority for me to get finished this month other than that, I'm going to mood read. I have gone through my book box books, um, my romance book box books. I have two or three there that have very dark covers. Um, I have a couple there that have buildings on the cover. I've gone through my shelves and I don't have many dark covers left on there that I haven't already read. Um, but like I say, I've made a whole... Um, collection on my kindle of ones that are black covers and the versions that i've got i need to have a look through and see which ones have buildings on the cover and then just try and see how many of those then also fall into series continuations that i can pick up so that i can try and make a dent in both um so yeah so i'm looking forward to having fun this month there is a discord for realmathon um and Steph has a Discord for Final Book Support Group where we can all cheer each other on as well. There's going to be sprints online on YouTube throughout the month um, for both of them. Or oh, Steph's will be confined to the week she, that she's doing it, obviously. But yeah, that's my tentative TBR. So let me know what you're reading in March. Are you taking part in Realmathon? If you are, which team you're in, please say shadows. Please come and join us. Um, and yeah, I look forward to chatting with you all down below. If you have enjoyed this video, then please don't forget to give it a like. And if not already, then subscribe to the channel so you can see more of me in your feed. And I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Bye.